Do you mind if I hydrate really quickly? Dog, hydrate up. <laughs> slam, slam a lamb a ding dong that thing, dude. What is that, a Pedialyte? Mm. Mexican Pedialyte, yeah. What's the Mexican one? Ele- I don't know. Electrolic. <laughs> dude, that's pretty fucking lit. <laughs> Not bad. How are you, brother? I'm good. Are we, are we going? <laughs> Holy shit, can I kick any gear here? I'm good, dude. Um, <laughs> I'm fucking unemployed as a motherfucker, bro. That's how I'm like yeah. just playing MLB the show until 5 a.m., Rolling up looking like a fat piece of shit because I just slept until one. <laughs> Dog, I know the feeling. I fucking, like, uh, I haven't worked in over a year at this point. Crazy, and, um, man. It fucks with your head a little bit. Yeah. Like, I truly do enjoy having the days to myself every day. But, mm-hmm. like, dude, like, the weeks that I have a show where there's a lot of shit to do, like, I got to I gotta go print flyers. I got to record the podcast. Everything's got to go, 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 go. And that'll take, like, 30 hours of my week. I feel pretty good on those weeks. But goddamn, dude, the weeks when I don't have anything going on and you're like, all right, it's Monday. I don't have anything to do. Mm-hmm. And you like try to find ways to make yourself productive when there's nothing going on in your life. Brutal. Yeah, like, it's crazy. Fucking brutal, dude. It's mental. I mean, we used to talk where you would be having like meltdowns and I'd be like, dude, just get a job. Yeah. <laughs> That would solve most of your problems is that you have too much of a crazy person's brain yeah. and too many resources and too much time yeah. <laughs> to possibly function as a human being. Like, I mean, you, I can't believe you made it a year and you're doing better than you were. So congratulations to you. Thank you. I've been unemployed for like two weeks and I'm like, whoa, you have to, you have what to the fuck in. is going on, dude. You have to just make yourself do shit. If Hidalgo yeah. didn't start right at the beginning of me being unemployed, I might be completely fucked. But the yeah. right thing fell into my lap like a month into being on this thing, to being on my unemployment journey. <laughs> and, and you do look like one of those guys. Yeah, You should make that vlog. I'm trying to make it as an influencer, and this is my journey. You stink. But <laughs> I can't stand you. You look great, though. Dude, you, uh, you've been one of my best. <laughs> I was going to say you look you great, look and then I rescinded yeah. it. I pulled it back. <laughs> you, you look, look like shit, but you I still look- love you. <laughs> You're such an asshole. I saw you too. You're like, yeah, you look You're my best friend. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm lounging, dude. This is my lounge wear. Um, I'm trying. I'm, I'm back in the gym, bro. Chill. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's fucked up. <laughs> what do you even do on tax day when you haven't had a job in a year? Oh, bro. I guess you actually keep track of comedy stuff, bro. I ha- I have income, and, and I, I totally expenses. too. I totally do too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, you can like you can write it off and go like I have no adjustment, I guess, and they'll just like won't take or give you anything. Mm. But I'm trying to get money back, so I like I went hoard in the payment, the expenses, and all that shit, and I got some dough back, which was great because I okay. worked for the first three months of the year. Right, right. So like, oh, I, oh, okay. And basically, like, I got taxed as if I was working on that salary for the whole year, and I only worked on it for three months. Gotcha. So I got like fifteen hundred bucks back this year, which was like pretty nice. <laughs> Such a piece of shit, dude. Well, last year, I'm so jealous. Do you know how much I owed last year? What's that? Ten thousand dollars. Oh, dude! I didn't even make ten thousand dollars last year. What the fuck? <laughs> Why did you owe ten? Because uh, we were talking about this on literally the last episode, but I was like day trading crypto, and uh, I didn't understand the concept that like, okay, you can sell things at a loss, right? Mm-hmm. So if you sell things at a loss, that goes against the money that you owe. But if you buy this, this whatever you sold at a loss again within three weeks, it negates that and you don't get that money back. So all of my gains were like fully realized and none of my losses counted. So it made it as if I earned 40 grand trading crypto when in reality I fucking lost money trading crypto. So my dad, oh who's my a God. CPA, saw this and he's like, are you a fucking idiot? Like, what did you, yeah. what did you do? Yeah. And I was like, I don't know. I didn't mean it. <laughs> That's psychotic, dude. Yeah, I'm, he's like, I, I thought I was getting money back. And he's, he's like, you owe $10,000. And I'm like, no, no, I don't. Oh, my God. Yeah. After you lost so much on crypto. Dude, <laughs> thinking that, like, being an adult and dealing with money makes my brain hurt. Yeah. Bro, last year I made $27,000. Not a big deal. Mm-hmm. I owed 1000 Brutal. I owed 3%. Of what I made last year, mm-hmm. at like including what they already took, so whatever the thirty percent they already took, they needed another three mm-hmm. because I drove for fucking fat ass Uber <laughs> and didn't put down any expenses. And they're like, "Well, you owe us nine hundred and fifty dollars for making Mexican families happy at three in the morning on Saturday <laughs> at nights, fat ass." And it I was is like, brutal Dude. that we do try to collect taxes from people that are making literally twenty five thousand dollars a year. It's crazy. It's a scam. Yeah, dude. I cannot believe I owed. Now I'm like, okay, like my bills are paid. Mm-hmm. But this is the first year that if like, 
every year, dude, when I got my tax return, it'd be like, oh, I can breathe for a week. Mm. Like, it, this was like a life or death. Now, luckily, I'm okay. But like, 3% on, on top of what they already take. I have a great story mm -hmm. that jarred loose from my childhood, and it's been destroying on stage. So I'm not okay. going to do the joke version, but like, just the story itself is funny. I might have told you this already. And I don't know if this will get me in trouble, but... Who cares? Whatever, dude, get in trouble. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. If, I don't know if you've been watching any of the podcasts that are coming out of Austin lately, but all we're doing is getting in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just happy to be here at the Creek in the Cave studio. Yeah, shout the shirt. Out the Creek in the Cave. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love everyone. <laughs> the end. Um, dude, I thought this would be... <laughs> what if uh, everyone was trying to be mad at Ty Rivera, but they were racist and got mad at Ty Nguyen instead. <laughs> Just got them mixed up. Start beating the shit out of Ty Nguyen, the sweetest guy. <laughs> like, you gay piece of shit. He's like, I'm straight. I just have one ball. <laughs> <laughs> I got the one ball. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's funny. Um, <laughs> that could happen. Austin's like so. <laughs> it's it's I don't know what it is Mixed down here. It's hard to. Mixed up the face tattoos with the Vietnamese guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, Ty does look Asian. One of the funniest things I ever heard was Colin Terrell taking Ty Rivera off stage. It was like, sorry about the scary Asian lady. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me laugh every time I think about it. Um, but yeah, I get conf like, <laughs> dude. Poor Christina Mariani. She did my show on Tuesday, and she walked in and saw Austin Young sitting in the green room, and she was like, "Hey, sorry, I'm running late. Like, thank you for being, you know, patient with me with like, the lineup and everything." <laughs> and Tabit was like, "Are you doing a bit, Christina?" And she was like, "No." And Tabit had to be like, "That's Austin Young." <laughs> <laughs> and then I walked in with my full beard, and I didn't realize that until after I was like, you know what I mean? Anyway, um, oh, cause very she, fun because she has just seen the picture of you online with the shaved face, and that's how like. Well, no, I mean, Christina know each other. Yeah. I think, yeah. I don't know. Everyone, it's, <laughs> everyone confuses me and Austin <laughs> as the same person, even though I don't think we look anything alike. That's how being giant oafs. Yeah. Um, You're both just big boys. You're both yeah. tall and big. I mean, it's the same way. Like, I get it, dude. I did, like, some horrible <laughs> bike in Cedar Park, mm -hmm. and I was headlining. I was doing, like, 25 minutes for, like, 50 bucks, which I was like, let's that go. That brewery show, the... Uh, Hudax Brewery Show? No, not Hudax. The mm -hmm. one, um, okay, well, go on. Sorry. Yeah, it's a shitty, yeah. White whatever. Zone, that thing. No. Okay. Different place. Horrible place. Um, and just this, like, black guy walks up to sit down, and I'm doing 25 minutes in front of three people. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, and I bring up, I forget who it was, just a black guy who's like an open mic comic. And I go, oh, there he is right now. Like, it wasn't Muhammad Yuwal, but I was like, oh, there's Muhammad. And it was just a black guy. And I was like, <laughs> God damn it, dude. I need to get out of Austin. Now, my original story is yes, this. Yes, I derailed this. My Go fault. ahead, my bad. No, no, no. No, that was mine. Um, so, my parents, when I was born, were very successful. Mm -hmm. Had their own company. Like, like, a small business marketing company. But it was competing with, like, corporate people. Because mm -hmm. they were killing it, right? Because <clears throat> apparently my mom was a super smart lady and my dad was just like this handshaker like hey what are you a piece of shit what do you got a tiny dick and everyone loved him and they were super successful and my mom didn't believe in paying taxes Ooh. and at one point my mom owed the canadian government two hundred and fifty thousand dollars holy fuck and this is in the 90s when that actually meant something yeah and this is what i say on stage instead of paying those taxes back to the government, she instead passed away. <laughs> <laughs> that is a real lady right there, dude. That is a, you have to take this money from my cold, dead hands. I'm out. I'm not paying those taxes back. That fucking rocks. And I never understood that. And, you know, I was always like, why wouldn't she just pay? Like, she just, she fucked my dad so hard. Yeah. Because it's not like the government was like, oh, that's a shame. Yeah, oh, too bad. Yeah, sorry about your mom, <laughs> you two little fat kids. No, they looked at my dad like, come up with the money, you stupid fuck. And he's like, yo, my wife died and I have to sell my business. And they're like, Is that why you guys care. went to America? Uh, I, I don't know, dude. My dad keeps some shit vague Yeah. for me. And, you know, I think rightfully so. But, um, no, I think he, he ah, dude. Who knows? But I never understood that. And I was like, my mom fucked my dad so hard. And then I owed $950 on a $27,000 annual income. And I was like, I get it, dude. It's falling apart. I'm going to reunite with my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have a conversation with her about paying taxes Killing back. Killing yourself over $950 is a brutal way to go. <laughs> I mean, that's... <laughs>
I know. That, and I've survived so much. So sad. It's just like for he, me to die overnight with a thousand dollars. Like how much did he owe? Nine hundred fifty. <laughs> Oh my god, that's almost a million. No, it's nine hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> nine fifty, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my god, Sam owed a million dollars. No, no, Grand? No. <laughs> He's never made more than forty thousand dollars a year. It was mm. nine hundred period dollars. Mm. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was uh, so crazy. That what a legend my mom is. She's like, I'm like they were. My, my parents were balling. Mm-hmm. Another thing in my act right now. I was one alive mom away. From being a trust fund kid, <laughs> and then she just oh my it god, up. dude! I know because they were balling. My dad, my dad had a boat. You know what I mean? Mm. Like they were millionaires before they were forty in the nineties, when money actually was still a thing you could make. Yeah, and it like was worth something. Mm. Um, yeah, crazy. Yeah, now it's kind of crazy. You can have a million dollars in Austin and still be broke because you got to yeah. spend the first. 750 out of it of a, on a very modest three bedroom house in East Austin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you're like, all right, well, I got 250 grand left. Right. And you're like, yeah, it's nothing. So if I can hang on to this. Well, it's also like the transfer, excuse me, the transfer of wealth is so crazy that it was like you're either were rich or you were like an OnlyFans model. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's really no Wait, what do you like mean? What do you mean? jobs left where you can start from the bottom. And work your way. It's like you're going to start it as like a, a a box packer at Amazon. And then by the time you're 60, retire like on top of the company. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the American dream outside of athletes, comedy, porn. And that's about it. Is the pretty dream much is over. alive and stand up. It's just fucking. It's crazy how many people are probably. I wonder how many comics made a million dollars last year. Uh, probably a lot. Over a hundred. Maybe if this info is available on the internet. I'll be shocked. Probably over a thousand, maybe the highest earning stand-up comedians. Yeah. But over a thousand. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's people that you don't even think of that just make cake every year. People yeah. that like aren't really in the public sphere. They just do corporates. Dude. Cause if you fucking sell out cash. an arena, you make a million dollars in a night. Like if you sell yeah. out Moody, you make one million dollars which is why like stand-up is so different than like any of the other shit is if you're in a <laughs> band and you sell it moody you have to pay out you have to split it five ways between you and the members of your band and then there's a right. hundred people on the light and sound team right and managers and agents it's like you probably end up with like less than 10 percent of the gross whereas a comic it's like they gotta pay a manage agent and a Whoa. manager and you end up with like 60 percent of the money it's fucking crazy yeah it's crazy being a comic is, is it's the best job in show business. It's not even a question. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's a tough business itself. Yeah. Because you're dealing with psychopaths constantly. But like, if you're looking objectively at what you have to do and how the money is split, it's by far the best job. It's the best job in the world. Yeah. It rocks, dude. Like, <laughs> talking about, like, dude, I love, like, I, I was telling that, like, mom tax story at Buzz Mill yesterday. The sun was still out. Mm-hmm. And there was a legless dude in a wheelchair getting hammered, just sitting there like. Argh! I know that guy. He's and, fucking wild. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's nuts. Like, <laughs> but if I, <laughs> dude, if I had no, I, I drink an, enough. You know, yeah. if I had no legs, I'd be crushed you know, all the time. <laughs> so like, it's not like I blame the guy, but just like screaming about my dick and my dead mom. It's the sun is still out, and people were like, "This is great." And I'm like, "Great." Yeah. Then I went home and played the show until five in the morning. Happens, <clears throat> but um. Yeah, it's. I think that's why more and more people are trying to do comedy. Not even people are like, I'm funny, I can do this. Mm -hmm. It's truly one of the last avenues in the U.S. where you can go from living in your car to being successful. Yeah. And that window's closing, which is what people don't realize. Well, dude, Kill Tony (laughs) is encouraging people to come down and move and live here in their cars. So there's like... There's an underbelly of like open micer that you don't even see. Oh, I do, you buddy. Go out and well, you see it <laughs> yeah. when you're running the Tuesday. When you used to run the Tuesday <laughs> death mic, yeah, the dude. punishment mic. Oh God. And there's people. There's hundreds of them that are just like living in their cars that are down here that are just like, dude. I went up at like fucking um, a kick butt last night, and I'm like, I've never seen these people. Yeah. And it's not working at all. It's crazy. It's not. There's nothing. This guy's got nothing. Of course. And this is not, It's. it doesn't seem like it's going to come together in any way. 
Yeah. Like hosting Lucky Duck. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> hosting Lucky Duck. Dude, Alden Schaub is the king. But yeah, dude, I mean, I've worked at the Creek for a year. I'm done now, but I still run a show here. Every Tuesday, 10 p.m., New Joke Tuesday. Mm. Um, and so I've seen every comedian in Austin for the past year. Mm hmm. I've stopped working here for two and a half weeks. I go to Tabit's early mic on Monday, and I see 20 people I don't know. Mm. I'm like, it's been 17 days. Crazy. How do I not know any of you? It's mental. And well, the, it's caused you know, this, the open mic and the show scene to completely fracture and separate. <laughs> yeah. They're totally disjointed. It's rough. They're not together anymore where it's like, dude, I'm trying to like watch some of these people and try to find someone where it's like, I feel bad for some of these people. Like I think Tabit's getting out of it to an extent. But it's he like is, somebody but, like, but somebody that's a killer and it's just at these open mics, no one's watching. So there's yeah. no way to really get out of it. You're just kind of where you're at. And you're yeah. like, man. Yeah, I'm well, like, you know, and mics are still valuable because you need to get better. And that's a fact. But you know, I mean, I run the show with Hunter Carney, dude. Hunter Carney's like the funniest person I've ever met. Mm -hmm. But he's just been decaying at mics for years. <laughs> so like there's a little piece of him when it's time to translate how funny he is as a person to stage. And there's like 30 people in the crowd. I can tell he needs a little bit of like a confidence boost. Yeah. Because he's just doing like, he just is comfortable with like Lucky Duck mm -hmm. and like late Creek mics. Meanwhile, when me and the dude are in the car together, he says anything and I'm like shitting my pants. Yeah. He's like truly an eccentric, like <laughs> genius who's yeah. also fucking retarded. He's like the funniest guy ever. <laughs> like I'm telling you, he's the funniest guy ever. But he just needs to find it on stage because he was decaying in mics. Um, and like Tabit is like kind of the only person who is showing that you can like up, like level up. You can break out. But they, he's like he also befriended myself and like Alex Olinger is like a seven year guy who's mm -hmm. like kind of you know our little friend group is like the like, truly retarded mm -hmm. because we get booked but we still go to mics more than everyone. We probably should. Yeah. You guys in Ray Genevieve <coughs> just fucking out there grinding. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I've ever had a single conversation with Ray. <laughs> and I see him every day. <laughs> every single day. I go, hey, Ray. And he goes. <laughs> and then he just walks away. I'm like, dude, what the fuck is good with yeah. you, bro? And he's so funny. You got to become friends with him. It's like, it's one of those things where I, once I became friends with him, I was like, oh, I like this guy. But, dude, this is kind of crazy because the last time I had you on, I had literally, it was a different podcast, first of all, but I had just moved here and I was still like stoked on Austin. Mm -hmm. we were both kind of were. We were like, we're not in Connecticut anymore. Yeah, yeah. This is fucking great. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about like the whole thing now, like two years later where we're actually settled, you know, like we live here now, like this is, this is home. Yeah. Uh, it's has its flaws mm -hmm. certainly. And I can sometimes feel myself getting like the pessimistic Tim Dillon sort of take yeah. where I'm like, fuck all these white people. This city needs to be fucking nuked. Yeah. No one has a personality <laughs> here or a soul. Like everything's too expensive. The shit that's not expensive is just Mexican, which is like that rocks. But mm -hmm. I find myself slipping into that sometimes. But that is just me being spoiled. Whenever I feel like myself slipping into that, I am like, oh, I'm just being a spoiled baby. Mm -hmm. Because, like, I think about driving down Route 8 from my parents' house where I was living in their basement mm -hmm. in a town where there's literally no jobs. Yeah. If you want to get a job and you don't have, like, an uncle that's in finance that can bring you to New York, you're going to work at Wendy's. That's your job. Like, yeah. learn a trade or work at Wendy's, bro. And then driving to Bridgeport to try and do stand up and just like having dudes like try and fight me and like push me after shows, mm -hmm. trying to work the club where I'm trying to enforce rules to like 400, like probably lower middle class to completely impoverished black people who don't love white people. Also, just as a brief <laughs> aside, the Bridgeport Stress Factory, I've had I've done two full weekends there both with two comics that sell a lot of tickets. Mm -hmm. And I've had two of the most rowdy and uncontrollable shows there yeah, where it wasn't even fun. Like it's like some of these heckler interactions. I'm like, Oh, this is great. We got somebody going after me. This is awesome. Literally. I've done shows there where from the moment I walk on stage, the audience is just talking amongst themselves yeah, for the yeah. whole set, yeah. like from the jump. And you're like, this is fucking great. Mm -hmm. And that was your job. You worked there. You were, they were, 
two you, years. You were a true host in that, like, you were a host in the restaurant sense of the war mm-hmm. and the comic sense of the war. Yeah. Like, you had to let people in, sit them down, go, what do you want for food, and then go on stage. Yes. Crazy. Every time I hear 24 Karat Magic, I, like, freak out. Because mm-hmm. that was a song they would play when they would bring down the projector to play the video. Mm. To be like, look at all the stars who have come here. And the video is, like, horribly dated. <laughs> yeah. And it's obviously not in that room. It's from the other club in New Jersey. Yeah. And they would do, like, a little light show. Um, and I would be like running around the, the stress factory has a balcony. So I'd just be like running trays of food upstairs, up a flight of stairs, trying to distribute it. I'm wearing like khakis cause Vinny brand wanted me to dress like I was a manager. Even though I was making $13 an hour and no tips. So I was wearing like a, like a plaid button down in khakis. Like, did you get the chicken? 10, 24 K. And I was like, had to freeze stop what I was doing. I'm pouring sweat, run on stage, try and catch my breath and be like, I'm your host. And everyone's like, fuck you. You're my host. <laughs> you just showed me my seat and gave me my pretzel. You fat bitch. And I would go, thank you. Here's your feature act. And then go right back to work for Never two happened, you just years. Do like seven off top. Right. So you're doing like a quick, like bang, bang, depending on the show. Normally at once, I mean in the beginning, cause I was such a horrible comedian. Yes. Mm-hmm. Eventually I would do like 10 or 12. And then I started doing two-man shows where I would cold open with 25 oh and then bring God. up the headliner. And it was almost always a Wednesday or a Thursday show for some, like, urban Instagram act. Yeah. Where there's just, like, 17, like, middle-aged black folks and me in my button-down shirt and, you know, Schuler the comedian. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm doing cold, cold open with 25 in front of 17 people, like, fuck you dude yeah um i've but, actually heard Schuler king's pretty nice guy I'm just <laughs> yeah i just picked a name to be honest <laughs> I, i'm sure i worked with him when i was in bridgeport yeah <clears throat> but yeah dude and <clears throat> i mean that's a mental time and i have so many stories from that place um that we can get get into but whenever i think about austin about like how much how much i get frustrated with sort of like trust fund kids acting as if they are poor Mm -hmm. and then sort of making that a personality and then just like just being annoying just white people being annoying that's sometimes what i feel about the city and i'm like why am i here i would rather be alone than deal with annoying white people with it like with enthusiasm they just wake up and they're like what can life do for me today i'm like oh my god i can't stand (laughs) you i can whenever i think about that i'm like well i can get a job and i have a place to live and there's comedy clubs that I can talk about my tiny penis and dead mom at. Mm-hmm. My girl is here. Like, Texas rules. Austin rules. Because it's like you can live like a human being. And I still kind of am pumped on the city. I'm pumped on it, too. And yeah. I think, like, one of the things is if you had recently become unemployed in New York City, this wouldn't be like, oh, this is like I'm playing MLB The Show till 5 a.m. This would be like, I am freaking out <laughs> yeah dude because i have no idea how i'm gonna pay rent yeah like, i'm moving back in with my parents is what i'm doing yeah if i'm unemployed in new york city 100 percent. i'm going okay thank you it's the end i'm of the driving road. two hours back to my parents house yeah totally i mean do you have fucking four grand a month to cover living expenses and rent together like because if you don't you're just gone <laughs> yeah you're shot like you got to have that just to cover base expenses mm-hmm. and i think down here man it's like I don't know. There's so many people that are not necessarily like full-time comics because that's a stretch. That means that you're like making your expenses every month. But there's people where it's like this is all they're doing and they're Mm -hmm. able to do that because it's like affordable. Right. And the other thing, too, is I've never lived in a place like this where comedy is like the thing to do. Right. Where there's like this much of a desire for people to go out and see stand-up. Like People are jacked up on it. Totally. Everyone watches stand up here, which is such a unique thing. Also kind of freaks me out because stand up like stops being trendy. You know, it's it's over. Yeah, um, I don't think so. But you're not. It's it's not going to be as hot as it is. Also, well, what's frustrating about that? It's not necessarily about Austin. It's about stand up in general. That it's so huge. Mm -hmm. That it's like, when did comedy become about how attractive you are and dating? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I'm not looking at you specifically, but you certainly can fall under that elk. (laughs) But you were doing comedy when it wasn't cool anyway. And you were with me and Chris Seager and the fat retards in Bridgeport. Like, I'm not looking at you. Yeah. But that's what it seems to be like. That's that's who's taking off right now is hot people being like, oh, my gosh, dating. And it's like comedy is for ugly fucking goblins and 
retard. Someone said the, a, a gay slur. I'm sorry. And it's like, this is supposed to be for me. It's not just in my you. buddies. That's crazy. Not hot people who are like, oh my god, I got dumped. It's like, did ya? Then what happened? Dude. Nothing else. Bro, I mean, you're making Bill Burr sound like he's a bridge goblin. You know, Bill Burr. <laughs> he is, dude. He's not. Have you heard his voice? He's a like, Bill Burr is a good looking guy. He's a good looking guy who just like, oh, I got a black wife and fucking black kids. I fucking hate everybody. <laughs> when they're fucking broads. <laughs> Dumb cunt. Fuck <laughs> you. It's like that guy. Yeah, sure. He's fine looking. He's a goblin, dude. He is a. He came up from the gutter. You're fucking it sound goblin. like everyone who fucking does stand up should be a bunch of bridge. Just be run by you and Austin Young, <laughs> Kings of the Castle. Dude. Austin Young's a fine looking fella. No, he's not. And he's a very. <laughs> 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 and he is a funny comedian. He's the best. And a sweetheart. Don't he's you the, dare, dude. He's the best guy. I'm yeah, sorry. He's I awesome. I didn't mean it. I'm sorry, Austin. Yeah, it's okay. I. I mean, yeah. there's literally the most recent video of him is him holding a possum. <laughs> Yeah, that's like, badass. Dude. I saw that and I was like, I would never do that. That <laughs> yeah. guy rules. He catches a possum. <laughs> yeah, that guy's awesome. But, um, you know, yeah, you're right. It's not, the business isn't exclusively for ugly people, but it's like, if you, it, if for whatever reason, it's just taken its own sort of life on Instagram mm -hmm. where it's like, it, yeah, it's cool to be like, look at this person doing comedy. They're attractive and talking about dating. I think it and works for a while. And that shit just bores me. But then eventually you get raked over the coals in the opposite direction. If your fan base hits critical mass, at some point it just kind of turns on you. It's going to yes. be an awful thing to deal with, you know? Yeah, totally. And, I don't, and I'm not wishing that on anybody. Mm -hmm. But, like, you're probably right. That if, if, staying, it's, if it's that superficial of an act mm -hmm. and you aren't really growing and you're sort of just like, oh, I did it. I'm a comedian. Yeah. I'm 29 and hot enough to where I can get past on this. Yeah, that's gonna. That's like a house of cards. I just sure. like every day. I feel like a hack, you know. And I think that's. Like <laughs> well, you good, should trust that instinct. That's a. Good, <laughs> I think it's a good thing to wake up every day and just be like, you know what, man? Like this is not. This is not what I'm doing right now. Is not working, and we need yeah. to be better than this. I'm shocked that you aren't a hack. Mm. Shocked. <laughs> Everything about you it's the is nicest like, thing. You've I'm ever a said. hack. It's the nicest thing you've ever said. And then you go on stage. And I'm like, hey, that was an original thought. Look at my boy go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You have made massive strides. I'm, I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Right back at you, brother. Mm -hmm. I mean, dude, when you, it, I think truly it was like last year around this time when you started talking about the dead mom stuff and you're just like, you know what, dude, I'm fucking going for it. Yeah. Cause there are people truly, and I don't understand how people do this, where you go through a year and you're doing exactly what you were doing a year ago. Brutal. And I got a lot of the same bits from two, three years ago for mm -hmm. sure, but we're still trying to go yes. in new directions, trying to write new material yes. desperately. I wish more than anything that I could burn everything from two years and just keep fucking going. But yeah, right. it's impossible. It's so fucking hard. Yes, it is. I, I did that and it sent me to the open mic gauntlet for a year. Yeah. And that's like, and that hurt my reputation probably more than it helped. Mm. I'm happy I did it because now my act is completely new and it's like, I'm no longer just going on stage and calling myself fat. Yeah, which is like I hated that so much because I do have like a crazy story. Um, I was just too uncomfortable to talk about it when I was young because I was like, "What if I say this and no, and no one likes me?" You know what I mean? So yeah. like, I'm fat. Do you guys like me? Now I mean, it's that like is I the don't thing care where it's anymore. Like the vulnerability thing to just go up there and bomb on stuff <coughs> that is actually like deeply personal to you. Yeah, it's hard to go up at fucking uh, whatever that. McGreevy, what was the open mic that we used to go to on Main Street in Manchester in, at the Irish pub? In Middletown? Middletown? Yeah. Keegan's, dude. That was my mic. Keegan's. Keegan's on Monday. You can't go on Keegan's and just be like, <laughs> no. and just bare your soul and bomb. Yeah. It was a true bomb factory. Oh, yeah. Just people being fucking. Dude, there was a guy who would pull up in like in, a, in, a, in an in electric wheelchair and heckle people. Mm. He would pull up to the front of the stage and be like, no. <laughs> While like three drunks try to watch Monday Night Football, I ran that mic for like six months, and the highlight was um, there was this comic named Touch Him Priestley. I don't know if you if you I remember Touch Him Priestley. Yeah, great guy, and uh, still alive? I don't, I doubt it. But the highlight of my mic was that a homeless lady took a picture with Touch Him Priestley, and she took her tits out. Yo, that's the funniest picture I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, the funniest picture. I wish I had it. It would maybe the hardest I've, I've ever. I laughed. bet like Cliff Moolah or someone still has it. Maybe the hardest I've ever laughed at yeah. any picture. 
Because she had surprisingly great tits. Yeah. I still remember that. I was like, whoa. Yeah. Like, like boom. Point, yeah. Perky. Man, you shouldn't be homeless. <laughs> you must be really crazy. She is crazy. Yeah. She's definitely crazy. Like You're a walking ATM lady. Um, that's rude to say. But <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, where were we? Sorry. I got like, just thinking about, about the just homeless ladies' tits. Connecticut, just disasters, dude. Yeah, man. Yeah, and, I mean, dude, there's it, for me the whole thing definitely comes in waves in that like I do feel myself getting sucked into like the cynicism too where I think when I got down here I was just like unbelievably optimistic about everything. Mm -hmm. Cuz when I showed up here I got everything I wanted for a little bit. Yeah. Which was like a very cool experience to just right. show up and everybody be like we fuck with you. Here's everything. Yeah. Well, and you tricked everyone into thinking you were funny right away. It was crazy. <laughs> that I was down here in the open mics wasting away, and you showed up, and everyone's like, there's the funny one. And I'm like, no, that's not true. Yeah. And then you blew past me, and I was like, well, there he goes. <laughs> Nothing I can do about it. <laughs> but then that was like a year. It but then you actually got better. I'm like, thank fucking God. Well, I had to go down into the depths of hell for a little <laughs> yeah, bit. Yeah. Which is like being in the open mic shit scene sucks, but being there after – getting on the secret show and filthy and everything the first week and then just being like <laughs> yeah. i'm gay and everyone just hates slowly me. coming back to me where i'm like i told you you little fuck yeah. you're coming back dude but it's you know it's good i mean you went through it yeah that's definitely a unique experience to show up and be like everyone loves you you're on every show and you and this is also this is the city where there's like the most beautiful women on the planet mm -hmm. outside of south america and the middle east <laughs> and you were like oh great and then in a matter of months that changes and you're like oh my god i have to go back to hang out with sam hunter please no mm. and um <laughs> yeah conversely i was going the other way where i was like completely uprooted myself and i was like i better figure this out or i might quit comedy yeah. and just like work as a ups driver and live in pflugerville and have a great life yeah dude because that's the thing it's easy to quit in Austin because you can move like half an hour outside of the city and work, get some cheap ass place to live and make like okay money and be fine. Yeah. Like you, you can live a good life down here. Great life. Yeah. So it's I mean, easy we to be talk like, about dude, some why of the am I doing that likes? quit where yeah. we're just like, you know, we'll talk about <laughs> a few of these guys and we'll be like, dude, good for him. Yeah. I mean, truly. It's, I, I think hell in stand up is actually like purgatory. It's when you don't go all in and you don't go all out and you're just like still upset that you're not getting booked enough and you're not totally. growing, but you're not doing the work. That's like, that's true hell. Totally. That's, you, that's my biggest fear. You talk about him being the man, but you got to talk to Alden Schaub has a list of all the comics that have quit. <laughs> and he updates it and he outsources. He's like, please let me know if your friend quits so I can update the list. <laughs> and he has like a 30 person list and you, it's dude, next time you see him, have you read the names because you'd be like, Oh fuck yeah, that guy. Whatever happened to him? Oh, oh yeah. shit, I she bet. did quit. That is weird. Like it's very crazy, it's very crazy and odd. Is but Nick I, Roche on the list? He actually yes, and he has parentheses killed himself on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so oh, serious. My. That's on the list. Oh my god, that's fucking brutal. That's hilarious. That's fucking hilarious. That's insane. Alden's the king. Killed himself in parentheses. <laughs> As if he would forget. As if there's not three pictures of Nick in the creek. Oh, like, oh, oh my man, God. What happened to that Nick Roche guy? Oh, yeah. He oh, my God. Himself. That's fucking crazy. And Alden, just because he's like a Midwest farmer, I just can't think of him without just doing Norm's voice. Like, oh, yeah, Nick Roche fucking killed himself. That's fucking crazy. Perhaps my favorite day of all time. Was uh, there was a day when we were at East Austin Comedy Club and Alden was like the wine bartender for a little bit, and Nat Rogachevsky was there and got off stage and someone was like, "You were great last Tuesday," and she was like, "Uh, thanks, but I actually I wasn't here last Tuesday." And she's like, "Yeah, you were like working at the wine bar." <laughs> And yes. And yes. Dude. Some woman mixed up Nat Rogachevsky and Alden Schaub. Yes. And that's oh. awesome. Oh. Good for Alden. Good for him. Fuck Nat. Yeah. <laughs> people, when it, for some reason, people ask if Nat and I are related. Why? We've gotten that a lot. Mm. We've gotten that multiple times. Like, are you guys brothers? Mm. We're like, what? No. He's a Russian Jew weirdo, and I'm fucking cool. 
Yeah, that's awesome, dude. Your deep All hatred the... for everyone never gets old to me. <laughs> it's, well, it's 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 it a makes me it's a fire you that you're not liking me is not personal. It's a it's fire not... <laughs> that's never ending. Yeah, it's ever clear, baby. Um, yeah, I don't hate you personally. Mm. Just as a guy. Well, I've known you too long to like you. Yeah, <laughs> I know you too well to continue this facade that we like each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love you, but I it's love you um. Too. Yeah, obviously don't hate Ned. I'm just it's just fun to shun people. Fuck you, Brandon. Um, <laughs> Damn, his mic's muted the whole pod now. No more, no more speaking for you, dude. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how dare you, Go Birds? Um, Go Birds. This is how we get him back. Go Birds. Go Birds. Go Birds. What was I gonna say? Yeah, uh, all in, dude. Uh, I did. I did a couple shows last weekend, and I took my girl out, and. You know, took her to the creek where everyone's like, oh, my God, Sam. Like, everyone's super welcoming. But still, we stand on the patio for three minutes. And I'm talking to, like, Rob May, who's the man. And just, like, three open micers just stand in between Rob May and Allie. And I'm like, all right, we're going to go somewhere else. Then we go to Vulcan and Mason Smith's blacked out. Yeah. Like, calling me a piece <laughs> of shit. Like, I'm, like, kind of worried he's going to fall on my girl. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. God, here we go. And he just kept calling me, like, a bad person because I told him I wouldn't help Boone Blocker get on stage. Uh, for Alden's show, which is hilarious, because obviously I would help, but I just <laughs> don't ever want to do anything Mason Smith tells me to. <laughs> you know, obviously I'll help the guy in a wheelchair. You know, I do it all the time here, you know. And Boone's the man. Um, but then Alden comes over and he's like, "Yeah, so I'm gonna put you first, and you'll do uh, ten minutes, and we got about forty tickets. So it should be a fun show." And I was like, "Dude, you're the best. Thank you for having me. This is my girlfriend, Allison." And he goes, "Yeah, yeah, nice to meet you. All right, great." And then uh, he walks away. And I was like, that guy is the fucking man. Yeah. And she's like, I could just tell he was sweet. Like, in the middle of all these demons from hell, all looking at, like, this cute little brown girl being like, who the fuck are you with that fat piece of shit? And then Alden's like, yeah, yeah, sounds good to have you. All right. He's just like a beacon of nice, complete nice. indifference in a sea of volatility. He's yeah. just there being like, yeah, yeah, all right. Nice to have you. And I asked him, like, if I could put him up, if you could put me up earlier, because I was doing his midnight show. And I was like, yeah, I'm with my girl, and like, we're going to go on a date, so like, I would love to get out of there um, at a decent time. <coughs> and he was like, yeah, yeah, no problem, but it, um, you know, it's crazy that your girlfriend has like kind of a curfew. That makes me uh, happy that my girlfriend's parents are dead. <laughs> and I was like, dude, you are Norm MacDonald. Yeah. Like, you are <laughs> a fat Norm. It's the best. Um, but yeah, that guy's the king. Except when he's not Norm. <laughs> he's not Norm, no. But he, but like the Midwest farmer, and Norm was a Canadian farmer. Yeah. You can't, you can't replicate that voice or no, that cadence. Can't. And he's uh, doing yeah. Alden talking about. Hey, I used to get the salted butter, and I went to the grocery store, and they only had the unsalted. <laughs> and I thought to myself, I'm like, huh, maybe I'll try the unsalted. And it's funny and that I that's had it. it's pretty good. That's his act on stage, <laughs> like, and then off stage, he's like. Yeah, you know, nothing matters, and uh, if you die, no one really cares about you. So. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh my god, dude, who are you? <laughs> he's the best. Oh, uh, he's a fucking beast, dude. But yeah, bro, the uh, the sea of uh, of open mic, why being in that just I think really just eroded my mental health for quite a while. Oh yeah, Brandon, how do you feel when you're when you're amongst the amongst the dead? Yeah, I mean, I feel the same way as you guys. I I moved here from like a small scene where. I was like, um, it was such, you know, Orange County small scene. It was like, I instantly was like a person in it three months in because yeah. I could like write a joke. Mm -hmm. And then I came here and so I had, you know, I quote unquote had material. And dude, I just was, I was so bad when I moved here. Like mm. eating shit at every open mic. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. hopeless, sad. And then like it became like the purgatory where you said I got discouraged and then I stopped going out. Yeah. But I was upset I wasn't booked. And then shout out Jason Rodriguez. We're from the same scene. Mm -hmm. And so he just sat me down and was just like, hey, like you have potential, but you don't work hard enough. And like you're being lazy. And if you don't give a fuck, you're going to be stuck in this forever. And then from yes. that day on, I was like, I have to work hard. Yeah. And so but I mean, yeah, like it took a long time of like I felt like I had no friends. No one to talk to. You'd go to these mics and everyone had like clicked up, but I hadn't found my click. That shit yeah. sucked. I, I remember I was so close to just being like, what am I doing? I moved away from all my friends and family back home like to, to just be fucking miserable yes. every day. Mm. You know, like my girlfriend doesn't want to live here. <laughs> right. I'm just making other people's lives worse. <laughs> and then now that it's going better and like, you know, you have groups of friends. And, and I mean, I'm lucky I, I run a bunch of shows, so I get to do a bunch of shows. But... I couldn't 
I, c- I have like fear and anxiety about like, what if I wake up tomorrow and all the places I run shows are like no more shows and then I lose <laughs> all my other bookings and then I have to go back to being a full time open micer? I'm like, no, I'll just I'll just have to quit or kill myself. Like, yeah, yeah no, I don't know if I could go back in, dude. I don't know if I yeah I don't know if I could go to being doing like I did ten spots this week and they were all three minute open mics. Mm. I couldn't do that again. I I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to. Yeah, I feel like things like actually started to get good the night me, you, and Spencer all got through FPIA. I was like, this is the best. Because then yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, fucking Spencer and Brandon actually rule. And then we all started hanging out. And now everything's good. But yeah. for a while there, it was just despair pit where I was literally just like, I don't know what to do. I'm like, this is fucking crazy. Because I don't know, man. For a while, I was like, yeah, no one fucks with what I'm trying to do down here. Like yeah. when I got in the lows, dude, when I was getting in the lows, I was like, it just creates like this downward spiral where you're like, I suck. And then you can't write anything new. And then the thin bookings dry up because people are getting annoyed at you being a sad sack. And mm-hmm. then it just continues totally. to just go like, boom, boom, boom. And it gets worse. And if uh, dude, honestly, things actually got really good this year because I literally said this at the beginning of the year, I went, my mental health is no longer a priority. I go, I don't, I, 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 <laughs> I literally went out and I said, I don't care if I'm depressed. Yeah. I don't care if I'm anxious. I'm just going to work really hard for a while. Mm -hmm. And if everything blows, it blows. We'll get through it. Yeah. And then immediately I was twice as happy. Right. Because I just went, I don't care about being happy. And then it's like, all right, well, yeah, have what you don't want. Yeah. Because if you're like, I just I need to feel better. I feel miserable. I can't write new stuff. Oh, poor me. Then you just go bang, 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 bang. Because if you go, I got to fix the depression then you just get more fucking depressed. Right. It's so crazy. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, fixing depression is like go to the gym. Yeah. And you're like, I can't get out of bed. <laughs> How the fuck can I go to the gym? Um, yeah, but yeah, then the second you're like, I don't care anymore. You know, the second yeah. it's like when, like, you know, when I was younger and I was a fat, insecure retard, and I was like, women don't like me because I'm fat, which is like true, but not really. It was yeah. more so that I was like, if, you know, my personality is just like a horrendous. Um, <laughs> the second, <laughs> the second you go like, okay, I'm done doing that, and I'm going to focus on myself, is when you start getting pussy. Mm-hmm. Like the second you stop caring. Yeah. Same thing with like stand up, but like the the most important thing in stand up, especially in Austin, with how much like how quickly things can change, people are dying, people are quitting. Yeah, twenty new people are here every day. New rooms are opening. People are making fucking big money. People are losing their like savings. Yeah, like so many things are going in so many different directions. The most important thing is to have. A circle of friends, no matter like, no matter how big or small. To be honest with you, mm-hmm. like Jason Rodriguez to you, mm-hmm. that's truly the most important thing. Like, even though if you don't, you know, mm-hmm. even if we hate each other, I'm gonna be honest with you because I care about you, mm-hmm. and we've, you know, and you've been honest with me too throughout the years, even like in Connecticut. That's how you stay sane, and you have to understand that the pursuit is more important than the outcome. Yeah, hundred percent. Because you'll always be in pursuit of I, something. If I go back to open mics, that's fine. Because I still get to say the same jokes like, mm-hmm. and work on the jokes that I care about. It is what it is. Like Doing Buzz Mill yesterday, it was like a four-minute mic. Colton Jones put me on because he's the man. And I left feeling I was 10 feet tall. Mm-hmm. I didn't make any money. No one cared. I probably offended <laughs> someone. And I went home like, I'm the fucking best. Yeah, dude. Because I love the pursuit of talking about some insane shit that I've survived mm-hmm. that most people would never speak about and being like, can you guys believe this? And everyone's like, no. And I go, great. Now I'm going to make it weirder. And then like somehow pulling it off and I'm just like fucking beating my tiny penis over it. It's the pursuit, baby. When you start caring about the outcome, that's when you start getting tired, burnt out. It's when you start getting because fatigued. the outcome never comes. The outcome never gets there. If you if your goal becomes something and you start living for the goal, then once you get it, you'll just move the goalposts and keep going. Right. And so it's like it's what is it? The uh, there's something where it's like the person who enjoys running is always going to run further than the person that's trying to get somewhere. Totally. We are like, all right, you just got to fucking be like great analogy. Yeah. I've started yeah. fucking actually enjoying going to the open mics. Like I went to a kick butt last night. And I was like, this fucking rules. Like I'm, sure. I have three minutes full of a room where everyone's eating shit. And if I display any amount of competence, I'm going to get to say whatever I want. And Fuck people yeah. are going to be on board with it. Yeah, dude. There's a, there's a, a live mic with warm bodies. It's crazy. Make something happen. 
Yeah. You're in it. You want to be, you want to be, you expect to be paid a livable wage being an entertainer, mm -hmm. but you d can't do that. D suck a dick and die. Yeah. <laughs> there's a warm, there's a live mic with warm bodies. Well, the spoiledness that you're describing out. is so true. What's We're that? like the spoiled people being yeah. spoiled down here is crazy. We're like, People will be two years in and feel like they've graduated from open mics because yeah, they get dude. on two spots a week. That's and then the two spots a week go away. And they're like, oh, by like, far the most frustrating part of the city is yeah. everyone is like four and a half years it in. It shouldn't be frustrating because no. it, it should be an opportunity. It's a true yeah. opportunity where it's like you can lap people because totally. you're just willing to go out on a Monday and go to some dog shit mic and eat it. Totally. Eating dicks rules. Dude. How much fun is bombing? It's the best. I mean, in front of a real crowd where the show's the show actually matters. It's actually not the best. I hate it. And it fucks with my head every time. That fucks with my head. But bombing where it's like no one cares anyway is like. Phew. You know what's scary though? Like, if it's the last time you're gonna get up for a while. Like I went home for the I went to Alabama for the Fourth of July last year. I was there for like a week, mm -hmm. and then I was back home for a week, and so I knew I wasn't gonna get up for two weeks. And I went and did Zach Black's wildfire show down in San Marcos. Mm -hmm. Went up after Cam Patterson. I've heard of him. Bombed. Yeah. Bombed. So <laughs> bad. And then fucking was just like stuck there with Cam who wanted to party down there and just like being like, I suck. This fucking two-year comic just ate me alive. <laughs> and I yeah. fucking blew. I couldn't get him at all. I got in an argument with some members of the audience. And then just having to go from that to go like into vacation. Mm -hmm. Where you're like, if you come off, go, come into vacation on a crush, where your last set was just you fucking murdering, it feels so good. But to go in there with you just being like, yeah, I suck and everyone hates me. <laughs> and then, man, I don't know. I'm truly like, too much of my emotional state is based off of my last set. Yeah, like, there's no way to live. Yeah. You can't let how you do on stage determine how you feel about yourself. But it does, though. Does it not determine it for you? No. Really? Definitely not. I can't, dude. I, I used to. And that's when I was like horribly depressed. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, it's not like I'm never going to do comedy again. You know what I mean? I still have like, it's not like my friends are going to like hate me. Yeah. Because I don't make friends based on how well I do on stage. I made, I've made like real genuine relationships. Mm -hmm. And those are, that's what's important to the me. The actual having to sh something to show for it is nice the like actual like i've actually become friends with these people i've had these these experiences for because for a while i was down here and i'm like i have some new friends in comedy but like i don't know if i'd talk to them if i left now i'd be like yeah dude i would for sure hit up the boys if i quit mm -hmm. comedy i'd still talk to lejean yeah, for sure. yeah we'd keep it up we'd keep yeah it up. Dude, we'd keep it going so that's like a fucking legit thing which is when you're like and then you're like, dude, I fucking don't give a fuck about any of these people. That was a yeah. that was a dark period. Having friends is like the bit is like a, you were saying it earlier. It is the hugest part. Like that is the yeah. mo when I started having fun was when finally like you're right. <laughs> you can go bomb because you're never gonna do. It. You're it's not like it's the last time you do stand up, but it sucks when you bomb and then you look around. And you're like, I don't have anyone to talk to. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to like ha like if we weren't friends, like oh, I just have to go have like a pretend conversation with Sam, and then you're like. I have to pretend like I give a fuck that Brandon bombed. Like it, it, it's a weird, <laughs> right. it's a weird dynamic. But all of a sudden, when you have boys, you can walk to, up up to and be like, "Dude, that fucking sucked." And you're like, "It yeah, did dude. suck. That's way better. That's the best than letting it eat you up inside all night." Yeah, yeah. you gotta, you gotta have, uh, you gotta have the boys and like, you know, you gotta have people that like hold it down and especially comics because yeah, once you're in like the once you have the shared experience. I mean, dude, if I eat a cock and you go, "Whoa, <laughs> whoa." Then I'm like, all right, I feel better now. And like, if the relationships are real, it doesn't matter if you like start bombing left and right or like you lose Instagram followers or like yeah. you go back to open mics because you still have those friends. Wait. And like, I've been uh, someone who has experienced a whole bunch of shit, mm -hmm. grew up with money, without money, with money again, without money again, lived in different parts of like the world, mm -hmm. you know, multiple countries. It's just about relationships, like close relationships. Mm. It's really all it is. Keeps you above water, dude. Yeah. And if you have relationships where you're honest with yourself and you're honest with other people, you're good. One of my favorite There's memories There's nothing you can't you? do. One of my favorite memories of you by far were at the Lucky Duck open mic. And before I went up, I was just like, dude, I just like don't have anything new. I got all these new bits. And you're like... You, you you just go. I don't have a good feeling about you tonight. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> he goes, this you go. This is probably just not gonna go well. And I'm like, thanks, dude. 
and I went up there and immediately just started just like the pacing was off. The material was not there. Oh yeah, you were Everything horrible. was horrific. Bad. And just from the back, I just see Sam give me the uh, the, the gladiator like this and then goes thumbs down. <laughs> <laughs> I literally got the thumbs down from the back of the room. It's just like, oh, fuck. Like, I, uh, you can't come back from that. So fun. Yeah, but like, you know, if I hated you, mm-hmm. that would be grounds for a fight. Yeah. If we were like enemies, the way we yeah, joke that we are. <laughs> yeah. But like, we know each other for seven years now. Mm. That's fun. That's that's a memory we have forever. Yeah. How wonderful is that? The thumbs down from the back of and the And then show. you hit me with the same thing when you hosted the duck and I was eating a cockpit two weeks ago. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's great. Yeah. You know, you just you can't have fake friends and like that and base your whole f- fucking self esteem on like your fake friend group and how you do on stage. Yeah. Because the truth is roast people, especially in Austin, you suck at comedy. Mm-hmm. You're going to keep bombing, and I hope you do because your act that you think works sucks anyway. <laughs> Make a real friend and eat a dick. That's and it, And feel folks. good about it. Make a real friend, eat a dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, dude. Yeah. Thanks for coming back. I appreciate Thank you. Joe. you. We're, we're I, about out of time, right? Two eleven. Yeah, I was literally just about to light you. All right, we got to get the fuck up out of here. Sam Hunter, check him out on, on the gram. Check out his ferocious clips, dude. And uh, you guys want to go to fucking Waffle House, dude? Uh, I would so bad. I, I have to work to three more hours here. To Waffle House. Do you? Yeah, I'm here till 530. Uh, Thanks. Brutal. I'll do something that's not as horrific as Waffle House.